we've got a bit more than a month before President Obama finally leaves office. A new Netflix original film called Barry takes a look at the commander in chief's life, albeit as a student at Columbia University. Actor Devin Terrell plays a young and inspired Barack Obama in the early 80s. And here's just a quick look. I read somewhere that um, college isn't about learning. It's, a, it's about training. Training for what? To, uh, to want what you don't need and to uh, leave who you are at the door. But we're supposed to leave who we are at the door. I mean, that's the point. Well, some people can't leave who they are at the door. I mean, right, you know I'm the only black person in four of my five classes. But you're half white, too. What's that supposed to mean? Just that you can fit in anywhere, right? I fit in nowhere, Will. Devin Terrell stars as the young Barack Obama in the film, and he and the film's director, Vikram Gandhi, are here with me now. Thanks for both uh, being here. Uh, Vikram, uh, the tagline of the film, before he was Barack, he was Barry. Uh, so here we have the access point uh, to his life. Why did you go back then to Columbia in 1981? Well, when I read uh, a section of um, Dreams from My Father, I was struck by how this period of time was when he was learning about himself and figuring out his identity. And uh, it was also a time where it seemed like he was, he had been called Barry and he was becoming Barack. So um, it made a lot of sense. It was a coming of age time and a, a time uh, after which he would um, decide to become a community organizer. So when he was Barry, and as uh, we, we saw there in the clip, there's a lot to understand, obviously, about what and who informed him and helped him become the man he is today. Devin, how would you describe then uh, Barry Obama in 1981? I think someone who was striving for, for more within himself. Mm -hmm. And he knew there was something within him, but he was unsure what that was. And I think coming to New York, it was a time in his life where he was kind of really forming his identity and really understanding that he needed to, to go through adversity to become you know, something of, of substance. He is uh, obviously somebody many of the people who see the film will feel as though they know. And they're, he's got all very specific mannerisms, yeah. left-handed, obviously. There's, he's got a way of walking, at least the one that we've seen. Uh, what was the process then to capture yeah. him? Yeah, it was like a three and a half week kind of intensive process where it was, um, I'm right-handed, so I had to learn how to play basketball left-handed and right left-handed, um, the accent. Um, so it was very intense. We watched a, a, a little clip, it's like a 50, well, it's a 58 minute clip where um, we take little nuances of him and, and his mannerisms and try to understand. It was kind of an awkward kind of charm to him back then and he had a lankiness about him. So it was really tapping into who Barry was, not so much um, who Barack Obama is today. And interestingly, and, and I'm reminded of uh, the moment when he announced that, the, that Osama bin Laden had been killed and people made a great deal of the strut away from the microphone. Uh, Physicality, how much did you, how much material was there to, 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 to kind of see who he was then? Well, um, there's a lot of photographs of him during that time, uh, but there was, you know, two video clips that we looked at, one when he was at Harvard and the other that was this, this uh, book tour he did, I think, uh, in his early 30s or late 20s um, uh, when he was reading Dreams from My Father. So you really got to see how he was... Uh, speaking publicly, which was not in the same, uh, with the same confidence and articulation as he has now. Um, and so you could really see the beginnings of the person that, uh, that we all know. Um, but he was definitely more awkward and, and just more normal, just yeah, a, regular, yeah. a regular guy. I mean, it's interesting to think he is as theatrical, I suppose, a president as we can remember, um, more so perhaps than some of the actors who've served mm -hmm. uh, in, in the seat. Uh, did you find yourself relating to the Barry Obama you were playing? Yeah, ab absolutely. I'm, I'm mixed race as well. And just um, that sense of being a young person and trying to, uh, trying to find your identity and ask the same questions. So I was definitely asking the same questions that, that he was. But um, it, was, it was weird I, to realize that he was just a normal guy. So mixed race, what are the, the races of which we speak for you? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm African-American and Anglo-Indian. So, so I guess I'm fascinated by, because we hear in that clip um, a Caucasian person saying, yeah, but you're half white too. And mm. it seems as though that's just something that anybody who's half African-American does not get to ever be. Uh, it, it was, was that part of it for you, Victor? 
Yeah, I mean, I think Barack Obama's life story is sort of stranger than fiction. To, uh, he grew up in Indonesia and Hawaii with an African father and a mother from Kansas. And, um, and you know, it just actually, you know, when, when I met uh, Devin, it was crazy because I, I learned a lot about Barry from Devin mm -hmm. just because his experiences uh, are very close to um, what Barry was experiencing. And, um, and I think, you know, when you look at uh, America right now, we, you know, we have a very diverse, multicultural, um, you know, makeup of our country, and, and, and it's only going to get more diverse. So, uh, so I think in a lot of ways, Barack Obama is a symbol of, of, of that. And I, I think that's also one of the reasons he's connected with uh, so many youth, uh, because he, he is a symbol of what, you know, the future of America. You know, yesterday, uh Ta-Nehisi Coates was here. He has a new piece in The Atlantic um, in which he writes about President Obama's racial identity and how he has had to straddle those various worlds. I guess, again, as a matter of research, Vikram, how, how much available was there to, uh, to learn uh, about him? Ta-Nehisi spoke to the fact, I guess, as you just did, that he was so out there that there was no precedent. But how did that inform, again, somebody we saw in 1981 here in New York City? Yeah, well, I think, you know, New York is one of the most diverse places on earth. And so, you know, I went to, I went to Columbia University myself and I lived on 109th Street in the building next to where he would live. And it's a mostly uh, Dominican, Puerto Rican block. And so it's even more diverse when you think of him uh, you know, moving there. He probably looked a lot like the people on that block but didn't speak Spanish. So I think, you know, I was thinking about my own, you know, uh, you know, my own relationship to my identity and race during that time of my life, and I could only imagine it was far more complicated for him in 1981. Was there a sense that the presidency, even as a 20-year-old, was something that he let himself believe? Well, you know what, I, there, I, I think that there were references. It, you know, there was there was something in him. We didn't, you know, it's not so much in the movie. There was some drive in him to to be a leader and. And I was actually talking, there, there was a rumor I heard that some of the, the bartenders at, um, at a bar near Columbia actually used to call him Mr. President. Um, I don't know if that's true, but, yeah. but I know that there, there's, there was some, you know, people who referred to him as somebody who was going to do, to be, be a great leader. Uh, but strangely enough, during that time, it was a very introspective mm -hmm. um, and solo time for him. I mean, he talks about living kind of like a monk at that time. And unlike someone like Bill Clinton, who used to hear was the most popular guy in the, you know, in the class. Uh, many people don't remember Barack Obama during that time of his life. And as you mentioned, Devin, I mean, he, this is an unsure period, perhaps, of his life, but capturing that ineffable quality of what he would become certainly seems to be one of the challenges here. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was definitely trying to find the, kind of the inner life of, of someone who seemed strong on the outside, but was still had a vulnerability at all times. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, it was showing that he could be a leader, but also slide into the back of the classroom if he, if he needed to. I'd imagine this is going to be watched, perhaps, in a room in a White House <laughs> in Washington, D.C. Have you heard anything uh, from the administration? Well, we, we at, when we premiered at uh, TIFF at, in Toronto, um, there were people from the White House there, uh, and, and I've communicated with them. Uh, I don't know if he's actually sat down and watched it yet, um, but I'm sure... Uh, he does. He has the ability to. So, you know, hopefully we got close, and we'll, yeah. and we'll hear his comments. And uh, you know, I hope they're positive. Yeah. <laughs> you look forward to hearing about what he thinks of, definitely, definitely. of himself. Yeah, I, I definitely. I hope, he, I hope he thinks I got, I got close enough to to that young man. It's a great. It's a great film. And no, congratulations to you both no, on it. And uh, come back. Tell us. T tell us what was said. Okay, <laughs> thank you so Devin much. Terrell, Vikram Gandhi. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us again. The Netflix original film, Barry. It starts streaming this Friday.